space is truly unlimited. With so many possibilities for advancements, it is truly fascinating whenever anything is discovered. You never know what small finding will lead to something big, and what big findings will be revolutionary. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at recent space discoveries. NASA detected eerie sounds of Saturn's radio emissions. For those of us easily frightened, sounds are a sure way to make us jump. We can assume you will be at least a little on edge listening to the empty sounds of space. NASA's Cassini spacecraft, sent to orbit Saturn from 1997 to 2017, was designed to investigate the ringed planet. In its decade of activity, we did learn a fair bit, with us seeing the birth of a possible new moon, finding out more about the atmosphere and delving into the rings of Saturn. One of the most fascinating discoveries this spacecraft brought back were audio files, capturing the sounds of the space within the rings of Saturn. While it might not be a cold curdling scream, or the roar of an animal that will send shivers down your spine, there is something undeniably uncomfortable about these sounds. The sound files were collected on April 26, 2017, as Cassini took her first plunge into the gaps between Saturn's rings. This was a monumental achievement, not only sending us back the first audio sample of this gap, but this was also the first time a spacecraft had travelled into this gap, or so-called void, in between Saturn and its rings, by far the planet's most distinctive feature. We often hear that in space no one will hear you scream. The talk of sound not travelling and the overall lack of humans to make the noises our environments here on Earth are flooded with, it was still a surprising find that there was in fact nothing in this area. The Cassini project manager, Earl Mays, who works at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, said, The region between the rings and Saturn is the big empty, apparently. He continued, explaining that the researcher's next step was to work on unravelling the mystery and figuring out why the dust level in the area was much lower than we had anticipated. NASA gave a statement in which they describe what Cassini reported back to us. As she passed through the rings themselves, there were plenty of what have colloquially been dubbed ring particles detected by the radio and plasma wave science instrument attached to the spacecraft falling in line with what scientists had expected. However, as soon as Cassini reached the gap between the rings, the rate plummeted from hundreds of ring particles per second to only a few pings throughout the entire day of April 26th. This technology is not quite as simple as hitting record on your phone's camera. The RPWS does not record what our ears would hear. It instead picks up on the radio and plasma waves that are later converted into sound. This effectively allows us to hear the dust particles as they hit the antennas of the RPWS, creating a sound to compare against the normal whistles we would hear simply by being in space. William Kurth, the team lead of the RPWS, located at the University of Iowa, described the findings as disorientating, expanding further to say, compared to the hundreds if not thousands of pops they thought they would hear in this audio, he can instead count on his hands the number heard throughout the day. This technique and the technology we have on hand is remarkable, allowing us to access the information through a number of senses and uncover findings that contradict our expectations, even if the truth sounds a little more frightening. Three planetary systems are forming around this binary star, SVS-13. Sci-fi films have long promised us stories of strange planets and unusual life spontaneously being created in space. In our reality, we can see how some of these strange processes happen a little more accurately. Research published in 2022 
seems to indicate that we have seen the beginning of three planetary systems forming around a binary star. A binary star is a system in which two separate stars orbit one another. From way over here on Earth, when we stare up at the sky, they look like one object. These binary star systems are bound together, circling one another thanks to a gravitational force. The particular star system in question is called SVS-13. This system is 980 light-years away from Earth, and it seems as though glancing at what surrounds it could clue us in on how some planetary systems come to exist in these unusual environments. For three decades, a team of international scientists have bound together, researching and observing this binary system, trying to catch a closer look. This work has come together to reveal how these stars are sat in the middle of disks of gas and dust. These circles of gas and dust are seemingly more complex than what first meets the eye and have the potential to bring us some new insights on planet formation. The team used the Very Large Array and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array to study the binary star system SVS-13. These arrays helped to gain a comprehensive view and description of the binary system in its formation. SVS-13 is being classified as being in its embryonic phase. As we currently understand it, when planets begin to form, this is done so through a slow process in which particles of ice and dust come together to form clusters within the disks of dust and gas. These disks are referred to as protoplanetary disks and are found around forming stars. So far, this explanation seems to be somewhat accurate, though has only been applied to single stars such as our Sun. What would happen in a binary star system where there are two stars to form around and an additional gravitational pull we need to consider? We do not know very much yet about how planets form around binary star systems, but we do know that we cannot assume the existing model applies. This new research paper could provide some answers we have been looking for, helping us inch closer to an answer. Ana Carla Diaz Rodriguez, a researcher at the UK ALMA Regional Centre based at the University of Manchester, said that the results seem to suggest that each star has a disk of gas and dust surrounding it, as we find in single star systems, though there is also an additional, larger disk encompassing both stars too. The larger disk that encompasses both stars in the system has a spiral structure that is pushing matter, namely the dust and gas, into the individual disks, supplying the individual stars. This research is monumental and brings us not only a step, but a leap closer to uncovering just how planets are formed in these binary star systems. Uranus was once slammed by a rogue space body. We have eight planets in our solar system, and a notable shout-out to Pluto. But aside from Earth, with us here on it, there is one planet that is particularly quirky. In the July of 2018, several studies were able to confirm that Uranus has some relatively strange behaviours, one of which being its out-of-the-ordinary rotation system, spinning at a 90-degree angle compared to the other planets in the solar system. Following this discovery, we have to ask ourselves why this happened, and there are some theories in the works. Some researchers have suggested that a large-scale impact might have left Uranus a little different than the planetary pals alongside it. A team of UK-based researchers in the December of 2018 added some more fuel to this theory, releasing a simulation of what would happen if a body twice the size of Earth hit Uranus. A description of what would happen recounted that a large amount of the material from the unknown body's core would fall into the core of Uranus. If this was a high angular momentum impact, then a large amount of the core of the body could become embedded within the ice layer, forming lumps. So, if this theory is in fact correct, that leaves the question of when did this happen? Some scientists have suggested this huge collision may have been an event that took place millions of years ago, even before Uranus's moons had formed. Of course, not everyone jumped into agreement with the simulation. A debate predictably began, with some people forming conspiracies suggesting that the Earth had a similar fate awaiting in its future, with the alleged Planet Nine being the cause. The existence of Planet Nine is purely hypothetical, though it is an alleged planet that orbits outside of Neptune. 
It seems that we do not have anything to be concerned about anytime soon, nonetheless. Could this collision be what happened to Uranus, and is it possible that a mysterious body in the solar system could mean that Earth one day meets a similar fate? Jupiter's Auroras Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, fifth from the Sun and one of four other planets in our solar system to have auroras similar to Earth. The auroras are displays of light caused by the Sun's energy and how it then interacts with the planet's magnetic field. This results in a glow at the magnetic poles. On Earth, this is most famously the Northern Lights. Jupiter's auroras, however, are a little different if recent findings are to be believed. Spacecraft Juno, sent to Jupiter to provide updates and new information on the gas giant, has recorded information on electrons that were sent into Jupiter's atmosphere at a staggering 400,000 volts. Some people believe that this excessive electron activity and therefore the incredibly high voltage is what gives Jupiter's auroras their much more vivid, distinctive glows. Though others say that the rare occasions that the electronic activity is this high is not enough to ensure these prolonged glows of the auroras. Juno was able to tell astronomers that the high voltages are caused by the rapid rotation of the planet. The speedy rotations means that the planet replicates the effect of an electric generator on a much larger scale. This allows the electrons to fire these high voltages, resulting in the stunning red, green and blue glows that come from the planet's poles. The interaction between the Sun's rays, electrons and Jupiter's atmosphere is something that we have never been able to observe prior to sending Juno off out into the solar system. Another key discovery that Juno alerted us to is that Jupiter's auroras seem to be formed from particles coming not only from its poles, but from Io one of Jupiter's 79 known moons. The particles are pushed into Jupiter's magnetic field by Io, come from the volcanoes which emit large quantities of sulfur and oxygen. Whilst it is true that NASA has successfully sent many spacecrafts up into orbit before, Juno is a little different. Juno is the first ever spacecraft that has flown directly above both of Jupiter's poles. The route, journey and information of Juno is entirely unique, travelling in an oval, elliptical orbit around Jupiter's north and south pole. This means the findings Juno is sending back to us about these particles is brand new. Juno is estimated to pass close by to the poles every 53 days, meaning it is travelling at 30 miles each second. This means Juno has mere seconds to capture all these measurements and it does so using the Juno Energetic Particle Detector Instrument, also known as JEDI. Barry Mork, scientist at the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, was the leading researcher behind the JEDI technology, who explained what a feat this technology was, stating, We're very proud of the fact that we were able to pull that off. The confusion begins to arise when Juno did not send back consistent results. Astronomers anticipated consistent high voltages, though Juno has showed that this surge in electron activity is not always present. The firing of electrons appears to be random, with no rhyme or reason behind the different energies and bright auroras. Jupiter's auroras have been named a mystery for this very reason. Jonathan Nichols, a professor from the University of Leicester, in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, explains that the uncertainty here is something Juno will aim to clear up in the future. But for now, he is not quite sure how you drive auroras so bright with that particular mechanism. For now, Juno will continue to pass by the poles, and hopefully, as more data is gathered, we will be able to make more sense of the information at hand. If we can figure out exactly what is happening to Jupiter, we hope to be able to apply this to many of the processes to other celestial bodies, such as white dwarfs, exoplanets and pulsars. At the moment, however, Jupiter's auroras and their fluctuating voltages remain unsolved. NASA discovers hidden Kepler 1649c A team of scientists recently discovered an exoplanet orbiting within the habitable zone of its star. This means that this Earth-sized planet 
sits in an area where it could potentially support liquid water. The team consists of transatlantic scientists working together as they go through old data from Kepler, NASA's space telescope that was retired in 2018. They decided to name this planet Kepler-1649c. The researchers had been searching through old observations to see if anything noteworthy was missed. As it turns out, the algorithm used to sort through the data misidentified this exoplanet and ultimately dismissed it. When scientists reviewed everything by hand, they recognized the signature and realized it was a planet. It is located about 300 light-years from Earth and is more similar in size and temperature than any other exoplanet found by the telescope. They estimate that it receives about 75% of the amount of light from its star as the Earth does from the Sun. However, it orbits a red dwarf, which is known for light flares and can make for a very challenging and dangerous environment on the planet. It could prove difficult for anything to survive there. With Kepler-1649c being only 1.06 times larger than our Earth, it was an exciting find for the team to see such a similar planet as ours among the stars. As researchers are still investigating the exoplanet, there remains much to be discovered. They have calculated an estimate on the temperature, but they don't know what its atmosphere is like, which can ultimately affect temperatures. It is difficult to measure things accurately from such far distances, so they can also be wrong about the size. Their calculations have large margins for error, so everything is mostly speculation at this point. Regardless, scientists are excited to see more rocky planets like this one because it gives them hope of finding other planets with habitable conditions for life. A year on Kepler-1649c is only about 19.5 Earth days because of how closely it orbits its star. It is much closer to its red dwarf than we are to our Sun. Red dwarf suns are commonly found in our galaxy, so scientists are eager to see if there are more planets that they missed. In this exoplanet system, there is another rocky planet of equal size that orbits its star at half the distance that Kepler-1649c does. The researchers explain that these two planets are very similar to how Venus is half the distance to the Sun than Earth is. This solar system is incredibly interesting to scientists, as its data suggests it is very stable. They have found that for every four times the outer planet orbits its star, the inner planet does so nine times. It has nearly exact counts every orbit, which indicates a very stable ratio and history. It is consistent and likely to continue for a long period. Its ratio is nearly perfect, which astronomers call an orbital resonance. Typically, they appear at 2 to 1 or 3 to 2 ratios, not 9 to 4. It is quite rare, which might be the result of a middle planet that they have not yet found. Although they looked for one, it might be too small or at a tilt that the Kepler transit method is unable to pick up. The scientists working through Kepler's data will continue to study this planet's system and look for others that the computer might have missed. Kepler-1649c is just another Earth-sized planet that increases the evidence of potentially habitable rocky planets that can encourage life. From incredible discoveries to outlandish theories, there is plenty of research awaiting in the field of astrophysics. What will we discover next? But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and please help us grow this community by liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.